Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, this is our third part of the Frequently Asked Questions in Business Intelligence. This is where we've gathered a number of questions from our instantaccessbi.com uh, service, and it's where a lot of power users go. They uh, ask questions. They It's typically questions that are from developers or users of the actual business intelligence. And we found it to be helpful that if we can get some of these really commonly asked questions out there, uh, you know, it might save you time, might uh, be able to show you the value of the Instant Access service. And so we decided to collect a bunch of them, and this is part three of it. Uh, today we have Andrew Kreider. Uh, he'll be uh, going through our uh, last questions that we find from this. Uh, if you have any questions about business intelligence, about a specific product, any problems that you're running into, feel free to contact us. We also love to get input on what you would like to see from webinars, so you know, always feel free to email us. Uh, I, just before, I went through our mission statement, and now I'm going through a little bit of our uh, expertise in the business intelligence arena. Uh, we've been around since 1998, uh, and you know, anything you want to know, we probably can help you out. Uh, with that being said, let me turn it over to Andrew, and Andrew will be answering some of the most frequently uh, asked questions that we see on our Business Intelligence Instant Access uh, website. Thanks, Trent. Um, as Trent mentioned, today what we're going to go over is some items that are commonly asked via our Instant Access service. Uh, the three things that we're going to cover today are alerters in Web Intelligence, uh, the drill down function native to uh, web intelligence, and then also uh, the drill down feature that we use for a lot of our clients to kind of improve their performance reporting, uh, as well as to give a neat visual that's only possible in Fortado via linking. So the first topic that we're going to talk about today is alerters. Alerters um, are what they were called in 3.1. In 4.0 they're called conditional formatting. And as you can see right now, we have certain cells here that are highlighted dynamically for different uh, percentages of sales for a year. So for example, right now I have a, a rule right now that anything over 40% has a different font size, has a different color, um, and is displayed in a different, and is actually centered inside the cell for easy access by our viewers. So let's talk a little bit about how we would go about doing this. In 4.0, in Web Intelligence, conditional formatting or alerters is under Analysis tab and then under the Conditional. You can see right here we have different formatting rules available, right? So I can go into Manage Rules and I can see this conditional format and I can edit this here. And as you can see, since I'm doing a percentage, this percentage is a variable at this point, if it's greater or equal to 0.4, uh, I want to go ahead and add this green formatting here. Now what we can also do is we can simply add one right here. And if we go uh, percentage, okay, is less than or equal to uh, 0.05, right? So under 5%, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight it by using the format, we're going to change the format of it. We're going to change the background to a red. We're going to see a text. We're going to set the font color to something not quite obnoxious, bold. We're going to make it bigger. We're going to change the font. We can also change the horizontal and vertical alignment. So we're going to center both of them. And then also, we can also change the border. So here, I'm going to go ahead and change the border so that it's blue. And you can see that it's right here. We'll make it thick. Now, this might make it very noticeable. We go click OK. All right. And then we're going to click OK again. And click OK again. And so now you can see Right now, all of our formatting has been set up by percentage as well. So that everything now is highlighted in a different color. This allows you to quickly go to your users and highlight data uh, using KPIs and criteria that you set. 
And the great thing about this is that it's fairly easy, as you can see, to edit it as well. You can also add a new rule, right? So that we can do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and remove this one. Let's just do sales revenue. Okay, and we'll say uh, greater or equal to a million. We can change the format here so that the border, I just wanted to be bordered right now just so that we can show this. We're just going to do this. And we're going to click OK. We're going to click OK. Give it a minute to recycle itself. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, modify that rule right here so that's a little easier to see. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a border. Uh, we'll do a background. And we'll just simply change that. Click OK. Click OK. So now you can see we also have the different cells that are highlighted here. Now, as you can see in the formatting rules, you can determine by clicking on which ones, on which uh, columns here, what formatting rules are applied there. Right? So we can see the conditional format and ones applied here. We can also do conditional format as well right here so that it will apply to that column as well. And then you can determine here what order the rules are applied to. So if you want to set up conditional formatting based on a drill down path, you can do that here as well. Now speaking of drill down paths, well, we're, there's two ways of doing drilling um, in 4.0. The first one is via the traditional drill path. These would be considered navigation paths that you would set up in UNX universes or in hierarchies that are set up in UNB universes. For these drill paths to work, you need to set up these uh, hierarchies and navigation paths at the very beginning in your universe as well. And so what we can see now is that I have a year, quarter, and month in my query. And so I can activate drill by going to our analysis tab, going to our interact tab, um, showing our drill here as well. And then by simply clicking on the years, we can drill up and down the navigation path. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to show 2005 and we're going to drill down to the quarter level there. Give it just a minute to recalculate all of that. And now you can see that the filter here is at 2005 and that we see the quarters. We can then also go up to the next level up in the hierarchy, 2005, 2006, and 2011 data. And again, we see this as well. Now, one of the great things about this is that you can either end drill to completely remove that, or you can take a snapshot of the data. And when you take a snapshot of the data, it takes a snapshot of the current thing, the current thing, and so this allows you to create a new report tab with that data there. And you can see that now this is a snapshot of that data as well. And as you can see that I'm still in drill mode on this tab right here. But we can also end drill. And it ends the drill at whatever level that you're at. So if you go down and drill and end up at quarter and leave it there, then what happens is that you're going to remain there in that thing for this tab until you restart your drill. So this is a great way where you can uh, take different snapshots of your data and then pass it along. Now what we like to do here at WCI is kind of present a dynamic drill path all the way down our users. And this is called, uh, this is being implemented using linking in 4.0, which allows us to build input controls based on tables. But as you can see right now, if we go to our input controls on the left hand side, right now we're showing 2005 data and th the third month. Now this 
middle column is showing 2005 data. This right here is showing 2000, all, all of our data. And this is only showing the third month. So if we clear the field filters, You can see the numbers change here, right? And these numbers change. This is now showing. To, this is showing all the third months of data as well. So you can see now we're applying no filters. So this is all the accessories sales revenue for 2005 through 2011. This is all the sales revenue for January of all three years. And if we click on one of the years, you'll see that it filters here. It filters down, and then we can click on three to show March. You see this field right here. Now this can be kind of confusing as it turns out. So one of the other things that we typically do with these kind of reports is we add conditional hiding on the report. So we go to right click. And we go to hide, and we go hide when, so we can create our formula. And we do account of year greater than one. OK. Click OK. You can see that it disappears. But when we then go back, Click on one of the years. We see now that it's 2006. In fact, we can even change the font name, the, the header name, to the year. And so now it's going to display the year that's being there, so it's easily identifiable to our viewers. Now, to look at our linking, you can go to the table, go to linking, and normally you would go to uh, add an element link. But right now we're going to edit the current element link here. And you can see the dependencies of this. So right now we're only limiting the block two. We're going to go ahead and also limit it to block three, so it filters all the way down. Now the purpose of this is that it's easily navigatable by your clients and it's easy to go all the way up to the top of the hierarchy as long as you do not set the filter for all the different reports. Now what you can also do is that you can also stack these dynamically so that you put this table right here behind this table. So as you drill down, the next drill down level comes up to kind of take a, the different room, keep the room on the screen as clean as possible. And when you do this, uh, you're able to prevent much more of a dashboard feel. So it's easy to navigate all the way up to the top of the hierarchy. And then sometimes you can also create, and what this also allows you to do is essentially create hierarchies, logical hierarchies at the report level, without having to go all the way back down to the universe level to recreate those hierarchies. Not only that, but you can set up dynamic hierarchies in the middle uh, using variables at the report level to kind of dictate what your users actually want from a business sense without requiring them to go through all the way through a drill path. So those are two of our most, uh, two or three are of our most common topics with business objects uh, in our instant access desk. What we're going to go ahead and do is pass it over to Trent for any questions. Um, and thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you, Andrew. And uh, let me bring up our here. If, uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, we're going to try to keep this one uh, kind of short. If anyone has any questions in the future, any topics or anything like that, please feel free to email Andrew or I. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming out to these webinars and your input is invaluable to us and uh, really trying to create a community here where people can give input and get input back and uh, really foster a business intelligence feel here. Uh, with that being said, we hope that you have a great day. Look for our next webinar uh, in the next two weeks. Um, 
we will have everything up on the website uh, this afternoon. And uh, we appreciate you attending our webinars as always. And thank you and have a great day.